Phillies, and everybody's excited. The Phillies are coming to town with thoughts of beating the Houston Astros. Connor <laughs> Thomas is joining us, and this is the first time that the Houston Astros have met the Phillies in the playoffs since the epic matchup in the 1980 NLCS. We're going to talk about this and so much more in this special crossover World Series edition of the Locked on Astros and Locked over Phillies, Lock on Phillies podcast. Hello and welcome to Locked on Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Eisenman. You can find me on Twitter at Eric Talk Astros. Find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. Brett, where can I find you at? They can find me at H Town Wheelhouse on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. They can find me at Strohs411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive. Positive. I like the feeling I'm getting about the World Series. Always Strohs. Uh, maybe I said locked off for a reason. Uh, maybe the <laughs> Phillies are about to get locked off the World Series. Uh, but uh, Connor Thomas, where can they find you on Twitter? You can find me at Connor Thomas 975 on Twitter, Instagram, everywhere that you find your content and all of the locked on Philly stuff at LO underscore Phillies on Twitter. All right. Well, some guy bet $50 that the Astros and the Phillies would meet in the World Series. So he won a whole lot of money. I think it was like $11,000 so or something like that. So uh, this was a very unlikely matchup, especially with the Phillies kind of hovering around 500 for most of the year. But uh, to their credit, they did not sell at the trade deadline. They realized that with the new playoff system, anybody could get hot and make it all the way to the World Series, and that's what happened. And uh, so you have to wonder what the betting odds would have said back then. And speaking of that, today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. BetOnline has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. BetOnline, it's where the game starts. And guys, thank you for making Locked on Astros podcast your first listen every day. Whether, whether it's on YouTube, keep on subscribing to us and go and listen to us on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast. Check us out. And you want, do you want to do a quick little intro for your podcast, Connor? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, thank you for making Locked On Phillies your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. One of the last two teams going right now. So there's no better place than Locked On Astros or Locked On Phillies to find your daily MLB content. So go ahead and check out all the work that we're putting together. All right. So uh, Justin Verlander was just confirmed today. I don't know why the Astros like to wait till the last minute. We don't even know who Game 2 starter even uh, is, even though it's going to be from Valdez. But it's going to be Justin Verlaren versus Aaron Nola. What do y'all think about this matchup, guys? You know, I really like this matchup. Um, but you know what, Connor? Let's go ahead and let you go first. Since since we have you on, there's two of us, one of you. Let's get your take, and then I, um, I'll, I'll come in and um, hit, hit behind you. Well, it's pretty easy for me to say that I don't like this matchup. I mean, you guys watch Verlander all year. You know how good he's been. And... I don't care one bit about the stuff that's been popping up about, oh, well, he's not that good in the World Series. Yeah, that uh, I'm not looking at that at all. Past performance in a certain spot doesn't necessarily uh, overtake what he's done and what he's been this season, the clear AL Cy Young. So, yeah, it's not a great pitching matchup for the Phillies, despite how good Aaron Nola has been. The only thing that I can hold on to as a positive is how good Nola was back on October 3rd when he faced you guys in the regular season. And I know you weren't playing for anything still. And the Phillies were fighting for a playoff spot. But still, when you go six and two-thirds, perfect against this Astros lineup, even if they're not trying, that's something that's comforting. So not a bad matchup for the Phillies, but there are no good matchups against Justin Verlander. Yeah, I agree. I just think with Justin Verlander coming back, he's talked about his lease on life, how he really never thought he, – he didn't know if he would come back and be able to pitch again – how he's got a different perspective. And he was asked um, today in his press conference, he was like, they were like, you know, um, with all that you've accomplished, um, how much does getting that first World Series win motivate you? And he says, look, I want to get that first World Series win. I want to help Dusty get his first World Series win, but I'm not going out there. My goal isn't to win a baseball game. 
there's been games he said in the World Series where I didn't deserve to win. And there's been games that I thought I pitched well enough and we could get a win and it just didn't work out. He goes, you try to win the game however you can. He goes, I, I'm super thrilled about being the game one starter, but my goal is to give my, my team a chance to win. And I believe they can do the rest. And I think that, guys, really is what separates the 2022 Astros from all the other championship teams. I believe Sully actually agreed with me, and we don't always agree that this is probably one of the best, if not the best Astros teams ever assembled and to make a World Series. Yeah, and if you uh, go back to your statement, I know he's 0-6 with a 5.68 ERA. Uh, Verlander's teams are 1-6 in in his seven starts, and uh, but that doesn't matter. That was, um, that was in the past. I think this is a different team. I think if you look at the Astros' bullpen, it's a lot better bullpen than bullpens we've had in the past. The offense... It's a little hit and miss. Um, you can, it, depending on what they, like if you look at what the Astros did earlier this year versus Aaron Nola, and I guess in their career, they have a 130 batting average against them and a 345 OPS. So that doesn't look promising, but like you said, that was during regular season. They didn't really have much to play for. And the other appearance was in 2017 when it didn't, uh, that was like five years ago. So we don't really uh, take too much because, stock and what happened five years ago for obvious reasons. But uh, Jose Altuve does have two hits against him and Christian Vasquez has two hits against him. So that's somebody to look at maybe getting some um, hits in this game. But uh, yeah, Nola is definitely interesting choice over Wheeler because Wheeler definitely has the better stuff, right? Yeah, he definitely does. So here's why I think Rob Thompson made that decision. Aaron Nola, by the time he takes the mound uh, tomorrow night, will have sat for nine days between this and his last start. Uh, Wheeler would have been on normal rest, but he was on the injured list until late in the regular season. So to get him that extra day of rest and throw him game two, that's a benefit. And I don't know if Thompson was thinking about the matchups with Verlander going game one for you guys, but it also benefits the Phillies to have Wheeler on a day where <laughs> there's not a possibility that he could throw like a three hitter and still get beat by Verlander. It's a slightly better matchup with Framber Valdez, who's still really talented, but he, I don't think he has quite the potential to just completely take over a game like Verlander could and ruin a really good start from Wheeler. So a couple reasons why it works out that even though Wheeler's the better pitcher and has the better stuff, Nola kind of fits into the spot pretty well. Well, I think, too, you don't want your top guy being used with the other guy's top guy mm, exactly. because then if, if Justin Verlander's on it, then you basically wasted that Wheeler start. I, I think it's smart that they're doing that. Um, I want to ask you this question. This is from um, from Jay Roberts, and he says, do you think the Phillies are playing on house money? What a great story this year. Huh. See, it's a yes and no, right? Because yes in the, in the way that they've been loose since they walked onto the field at Bush Stadium to take on the Cardinals in the first wild card game. This team has just felt like they're playing another regular season game, which – you see a lot from young teams. You see a lot from teams that haven't been in the playoffs before. They kind of get into that. We don't know what we're supposed to be afraid of uh, yet because this is all new to them. But it's also they're very aware. They have guys that are very aware of the stage that they're on, even though it's Bryce Harper's first deep run into the playoffs, JT Romito's first playoff appearance in general. Same for Gene Segura, same for Reese Hoskins. Like, even though these guys are new to the playoffs, they're not new to Major League Baseball, and they know the stage that they're on right now. So it's house money to this point, but throw that all out the window with the World Series. They want to win it as bad as the Astros do, and that may have gotten them here, but it's a different kind of pressure they're going to face in these next four to seven games. All right, so uh, Brett, let's go ahead and take a second and kind of talk about BetOnline. BetOnline.net is your number one source for betting football and the start of the basketball season. Find all the latest player development, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth analysis for every game. And as always, BetOnline remains your continued source for all your sports wagering information and live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite games and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online, it's where the game starts. So, Brett, uh, before the show, I asked you to look up some um, some of the odds from Bet Online. Uh, let's talk about them for the series, the World Series versus the Phillies. 
Yeah, definitely. Well, you know, the they they are sitting at right now for game one at an over under of five and a half, or actually over under two and a half. The Phillies at plus two and a half, the Astros at minus two and a half. Now the adjusted run line is over five and a half runs and under five and a half runs for the Astros. And it it looks to me like the Phillies overall in the series, they're a plus one sixty five. The Astros are of minus 190 and that shows that you know there's there's a clear underdog there is a team that's supposed to win and a team that quote unquote is supposed to lose but we all know that the team that's supposed to win doesn't always win and the team that's supposed to lose doesn't always lose so you know someone stands making a pretty good chunk if they go Phillies and the Phillies upset the Astros you have to bet a little bit more to get on top of that bet and to get, you know, a solid return from the Astros, unless you're Mattress Mac and you're trying to basically win the single largest single bet ever placed in sports betting history again. Um, but I think that's the line. And I think this line is definitely a testament to the pitching, to the hitting. Um, but, you know, Eric and Connor, I think the different one of the keys to this series and one of the differences is the defense. And I think the Astros defense is far better than the Phillies defense. And I think in a seven game series that that favors the Astros more than it does the Phillies. Yeah. yeah I, go ahead, Eric. You got it. <laughs> I mean, I would say that JT Rumuto is more of the all around player than Martin Maldonado, even though Martin Maldonado is one of the finalists for silver slugger. How about them apples? I didn't see that coming, but <laughs> who would have guessed that would have happened. Yeah. But yeah. I, I know, <laughs> Both catchers are pretty good at limiting the uh, the stolen bases, but uh, to talk to us about a lot more of the defense because we've heard some reports that the defense isn't great, and that's part of the reasons why you went out and got Brandon Marsh for center field. Yeah, well, the defense kind of stinks, and that's the, the funny thing about this team, right? It hasn't really killed them in the playoffs, but, man, have there been instances where it could have. Reese Hoskins was really rough in a couple moments in the NLDS against Atlanta, even a point where they turned what should have been an easy double play, and he literally just doesn't catch the ball first base. Uh, Alec Bohm has been really good, who's been a defensive liability at points this year, but then Gene Segura had a moment where he dropped a tailor-made double play in the NLCS against the Padres. It's just this team is going to give runs back at points by defense, and the only way they get out of it is by the high-powered offense that they've had and crossing their fingers that it doesn't happen in too big of a spot. Like in game one of the NLCS, the Phillies had the Padres down to their final out, ground ball to third base, Alec Bohm tries to go to short way to second, and just throws it in the right field, basically. So they got away with it. They still won that game, but they're living on a razor's edge when it comes to the defense, and a lot of people in Philadelphia are nervous that this will finally be the series where it comes back to bite. So what you guys have been hearing about the defense – yeah, it's a concern for us. Yeah, and that's the thing that we saw with with the Yankees. I mean, the Yankees defense was was not great and in that fourth game, the Yankees had a real shot to steal that game and to win and extend it to a game 5, but two big errors. Um, you know, the game before in game 3 and then game 4, the the terrible exchange or exchange attempt to, you know, you know, to turn the double play and defense you know, they say in football, defense wins championships, but I think if the Astros pitchers continue to put the zeros up and they are able to neutralize the hot bats, then whatever balls they do put in play, I like my chances with Jeremy Pena, who has taken over quite nicely for Carlos Correa. And I just got to say this, Carlos Correa was the guy when we, when we, when he left, we were like, we lost a clutch player. We lost a player that in the playoffs has this clutch gene. And how is Pena going to match that? And he absolutely has and turned it into an ALCS MVP trophy. Yeah, I mean, he's been incredible. I don't know. And we kind of face that with the Braves in division where they'll lose a guy like Freddie Freeman and all of a sudden Matt Olson will be there. Or they'll <laughs> need a guy in center field. And all of a sudden you've just got the NL Rookie of the Year coming out of nowhere. Well, Spencer Strider doesn't win it uh, as well but with Michael Harris. Like, so I, I get the reload thing, and it's very annoying because the Phillies don't do that themselves. Uh, it's it's a tough task, and that's another reason why the Phillies' defense has to be good because you know the Astros are going to take care of business on their end. 
The Astros are on top of the league at making comp contact. They're on top of the league of um, the fewest strikeouts. So they're going to put the ball in play. Yeah, sometimes it's going to be a, a weak pop-up to shortstop third base, but a lot of times it's going to be a line drive right up the middle or just so the Phillies have to be ready. And so the Astros are going to take advantage. So if there's an error at any point, as the Yankees found, it could lead to a big inning. And that's what the Yankees found out. And uh, especially with that home run, uh, I think it was the Chas McCormick home run. Uh, Bader, uh, you had uh, Judge run in front of Bader, so he dropped that ball. And then the next um, batter, Chas McCormick, hit the home run. Then the next game, the one you're talking about, uh, Brett, where uh, they had the error of, of throwing the ball and then that, that run scored. So, yeah, the Astros are very good at capitalizing. it. So the Astros also have a pretty darn good bullpen. They've only given up three runs the entire postseason. And that's been uh, the solo home run. And so they have a 0 0.82 ERA. So that's pretty darn good. And the pitching staff as a whole, the ERA is 1.72 or something like that. So they're looking pretty good. I know that the if you uh, look at, uh, sorry, the Astros is 1.88. They have a 0 0.93 whip. They're limiting the opposing uh, batters to 1.78. Batting average, they're having 11.1 .1 strikeouts per nine innings. And uh, so that's that's a tough matchup. Now, the tough matchup before we go back into the bullpen is how are we going to limit Bryce Harper? Royce mm -hmm. um, Hopkins, that's good. one thing. Uh, Schwarber, that's one thing. But I think Harper, especially as, hoppy, as hot as he was, he's the guy the Astros need to focus on. Yeah, and I want to ask you guys about that a little bit because I'm interested to see how Dusty Baker employs his starters, his bullpen, what they, uh, how they attack Harper. Because Reese Hoskins has been really good, but he normally bats in front of Harper in the in the lineup. Do you think they're going to work around him to the point where it's just like don't give him anything he can beat you on? Um, well, I think what's going to happen is they're going to add Will Smith to the bullpen. Uh, he's pretty good against um, Harper in his career. Uh, he's actually faced him a lot in his career. So he's two for 14 with a 1.43 batting average in his career. And Smith said, there's no secrets between us. He knows what I have. I know what he's capable of doing. It's just a matter of making pitches and trying to get weak uh, contact. Also, Neris and Stanek are pretty good against left-handed hitters. So mm -hmm. that's another well, option you can do. Exactly. So the two games that Houston faced, faced – um, on October 3rd and 4th, Bryce Harper was two for eight. He had no walks, two strikeouts, um, one total base. In his career, he's 105 with only two hits and two runs scored in those five games. Um, actually, yeah, yeah. So Bryce Harper has not had success against the Astros. And I think the Astros is probably the only team that has the right formula to stop him because they have an excellent catcher in Monty Maldonado who game plans like nobody's business. We've had Ryan Stanek on the show and he talked about it's unreal how much Maldonado studies the game and studies the opponent. And then you have Dusty Baker who is probably having the game, like the performance of his managing career, mm -hmm. absolutely steamrolling the competition, deploying Hunter Brown, Luis Garcia, Ryan Stanek only one time, Brian Abreu, Rafael Montero. I mean, I know it's painful for the opponents to hear this, Ryan Presley, but he has deployed them perfectly. And this is the one team that I think has the ability to stop them, but they can't make mistakes because like Eric mentioned the other day, or even with Roflo, he's hitting the opposite field. Like Bryce Harper is locked in. And when you got an experienced guy like him locked in, your counterpunch has to be better. You can't be Apollo versus Rocky one. We've got to be Rocky versus Apollo, the second one where Rocky gets up. And no offense, Philly, but I want us to be Rocky. Yeah, I don't know if we can uh, we can allow you guys to claim Rocky ahead of this series, but no, it's a it's a fair comparison. <laughs> that I I get what you're going at there. I'll just uh, I mean, and I haven't done this ahead of any of the other series when I've done crossovers with the folks at Lock On Cardinals or Lock On Braves, Lock On Padres, because frankly, until the Phillies got here, it still has felt like 
they're gaining momentum, but they're not really there. I, I'll, I'll say it here. I don't know that there is a counterpunch for Bryce Harper right now. I don't know that there's anyone you could throw at him other than just like fully working around him for the series. Lefty, righty, someone who's been good against him in his career, someone who's been bad against him, someone who hasn't faced him. Uh, he's just unbelievable right now. And if I was Dusty Baker and I was telling my pitchers what to do, he's getting maybe one strike a night, man. I'm just working around him. Guys, thank you for making Locked On Astros and the Locked On Phillies podcast your first listen today. For the second listen, check out the Locked On Sports today. From the games that matter to the game's most biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports Today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. And I believe y'all two were on at one of those recently, too. So um, go check it out. It's a good, short, uh, just a you know, quick way of just getting all the information across baseball and football, basketball, everything that's going on there. So with that being said, um, I think that, yes, Harper is going to be the key factor. And I think as the Yankees learned, uh yeah, the Astros have a lot of good hitters, but Jeremy Pena has kind of become that X factor. He won MVP. Mm-hmm. He's showing what he's shown in the past because he's uh, when he's played winter ball and Domin- Dominican League and everything, he's always kind of played well when he's played the, in the playoffs with all the major league players. He's been hitting those key home runs and hitting those big, uh, big hits late in games. So he has this this um this drive to just do well in the playoffs so i think we're just seeing this kind of come into playoffs right now so i think the astros kind of saw this coming so that's why they had him on the taxi squad last year to give him that experience of being in the postseason and now he's actually living the high life as uh, so to speak and he's just playing great baseball and so um outside of your top three hitters is there some is there a phillies hitter I guess four, if you add JT Rumuto, uh, is there a, is there any hitter that we should watch out for? Yeah, I'd be a little bit wary of Nick Castellanos always because he has the opportunity to get really hot. The Phillies haven't seen him do it this year, but when he's got his gap to gap, like doubles power working, he can be really dangerous. And another guy, uh, another rookie, because you were just talking about Jeremy Pena, Bryson Stott hasn't really had the huge hit yet this uh this off or this postseason he did have the double uh to set up the reese hoskins home run against spencer strider in uh, alds what was that game four but the other thing we're looking at with bryson Stotts, he just puts together such calm cool collected at bats for a young player down near the bottom of the order not so much for him to be the dagger guy but to either turn the lineup over or get it to the next guy and add a little bit of extra pitch count stress on guys. So Bryson Stott has put together some real good at-bats. He'd be someone I'd be wary of. Nick Castellanos, we know what he can be when he's doing his best. And that's where I think the Astros come in. They they know what is in front of them. Um, Alex Bregman said it today. Um, this is a dangerous Phillies team. We're not focused on legacy or dynasty or golden era. We're focused on the first pitch, the first at bat, after the first, like everything, we're focused on this game. And the experience the Astros have, I think, is invaluable. And I think this being the third time they face an, an, an NL East team, I don't see a third NL East team beating the Astros this year. I just, I'm not saying they can't. I just don't see that happening because of our pitching staff literally one of the most lockdown performances that I think we've ever seen. Mm-hmm. It can't possibly happen again, right? Like what are the chances? It can't be another NL East the, team. I would never the wish third that times, upon you guys. The third time's a charm, right? Right, Connor? Hey, yeah, I look, guess we'll find out. But look, if the Astros beat you guys, you can come back next year and play yeah. us again. We'll just go to a third straight World Series. But <laughs> the game has to be played. And I'm not going to make predictions. I know Eric's going to, at some point, ask me to predict. I'm not going to predict. I'm just not going to do it. I refuse. I predict with nuance, okay? Okay, fair enough. Uh, One thing the Astros have in history, and a lot of people are going to be like, Eric, why are you bringing this up? But they have never won a game one of the World Series. So it's very key for Justin Verlander to take control of the game and the offense to score some runs. So uh, you've got to take control of game one because that really sets a tone for the series. 
get at least one of two games at home, if not both games at home, because I'm sure Philly, uh, when's the last time Philly's been in the playoffs? Whew, 2011. So it's been 11 years. Okay. So they're going to be a little bit um, wild out there. So, and um, of course, uh, I've seen a lot of Phillies fans saying that, oh, you haven't been here since the uh, the scandal. We're going to give you, um, we're going to boo you. We're going to show trash cans and everything. But the Astros feed off that. And that's the problem. The Astros feed off that, and uh, especially Jose Altuve. So I think I'm not worried about that, but I just think that the Astros need to get game one, set a tone in game one. Justin Verlander needs to kind of knock this history off and just take care of business. So I'm going to say the Astros win the first two games at home. I don't see them sweeping their way through the playoffs. I think the Phillies team, the offense is I, – I, they may have cooled down, but I think the offense is too good. Um, but my question is, how good are your starting pitchers after your top, your top three? Well, here's the thing, right? It's funny. You look at it and on paper, guys that are making the starts. Ranger Suarez has the ability to be really good, but he's not consistent enough. Uh, and then you're throwing either Noah Syndergaard or Bailey Falter, who still had rookie eligibility this year, who had real trouble in his one start in the NLCS. Maybe they throw Zach Eflin, who's gone to the bullpen this year, but was a starter for a lot of the year. But funny enough, the Phillies are undefeated so far this postseason in games that Zach Wheeler and Aaron Nola do not start. So they haven't lost a game where they've started someone other than their top two. Weird to say, right? But that's kind of how it's worked out, and it's also because those starts have lined up on games where Philly was playing at home, and they're so tough to beat at Citizens Bank Park. So, yeah, the depth doesn't necessarily look like it's there on paper, especially compared to the depth that you guys have in Houston, but the benefit of those guys throwing at home and the confidence that they've built through the first couple rounds of the playoffs, uh, they're not easy guys to beat at this point. So, Connor, can you promise us that it's not going to rain and we're not going to have delays and we're not going to not get to take batting practice? I think the I think the Braves, I think maybe maybe Ted Turner's family owns a rainmaker or something <laughs> and brought rain. And that really hurt the Astros, you know, so hitting because they didn't even. Are you oh, asking on, him on. to make a prediction? No, I'm asking him. <laughs> I'm asking him to figure out the weather up there in Philly or get some tarps, get a roof, man, because I don't want this World Series delayed. I, I think, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I hear the weather, is is the weather not good for this coming week? Uh, I haven't looked at too deep into it because it changes, you know, so often. But this weekend looks good up here, which normally means, and the weather actually temperature-wise doesn't look too bad, which is more of a thing than rain. Like you can push the game a couple hours back, uh, even if it has to get moved day to day. I'd be much more worried about the temperature from both mm -hmm. sides, but – I haven't seen anything too worrisome when it comes to uh, the, the forecast coming up. So hopefully no rain. Really, really tired of that ourselves because we had some of that in the uh, championship series. Uh, and so I think how that brutal. Oh, go go ahead. ahead. So how brutal are your fans going to be to us there? Uh, unbelievable. It will be the toughest environment that these guys will have ever played in. Like have ever played. Bring in. it. Yeah, so and that's including I, I going to LA for the first time after the uh, everything going on with the the World Series. Like this, I doubt this it. Fan base, this fan base, see, people have said it before. This fan base is different in Philadelphia. They're nuts. Well, uh, they were peeing on Astros baseball cards in the in the urinals. We, we do that to like the Oakland Athletics for no reason in Game <laughs> Two. Like that is nothing to Philadelphia. It's going to be a heck yeah. of an environment up here. Well, I did love it. I did love it when I saw the first video released after y'all won, and I heard all the Phillies fans chanting, we want Houston. And I was like, oh, God, that's so much bad juju. Y'all don't even know. Like, like I don't know that you want Houston. I, I, I'm just saying I'm pretty confident in this team, Connor. I have a lot of respect, a healthy respect for Bryce Harper mm -hmm. and the cast of characters you got. Y'all are definitely not going to roll over. It's going to be a fight to the finish. But, man. I don't know if you want this team. Maybe you want the 19 team or the 21 team, but not the 2022 Astros because, baby, we are we have leveled up this year in every aspect of the game. Yeah, you guys would be the last team we'd want to play, obviously, but that's why you're here. That's why you won hey, the American League. Exactly. Family, and you've earned it. But, hey, we'll, we'll take on anybody at this point. And uh, there is a little bit, going back to the house money thing, there's a little bit of that still left over. Where it's like, okay, we'll take on all comers at this point. Who knows? 
Right. Uh, to kind of close out the show, um, I think that game two is probably going to be Javier, then game three. Sorry, game two would probably be Valdez, then game three would be Javier, then game four would probably be uh, McCullers. So final predictions for the series. I'm going to go Astros in six. Okay. Brett, are you going to make one or no? Well, Connor, I'll let you go and then I'll, I'll make one. All right. I'm going to go Phillies in six, splitting the first two on the road taking two of three in Philadelphia and then winning game six behind an awesome start by Zach Wheeler. Wow. Um, I think the Astros and Phillies get back to Houston in game six. I think Houston closes it out in six. Um, if Phillies force a game seven, there's no way they win two games at Minimade Park in a row. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. They're going to have to win it in six because they're not winning it in seven. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. So um, thank you, Connor, for joining the Lockdown Astros podcast. You're welcome to jump on anytime throughout the whole series. We can do this again. And it's just awesome to be able to do this. So, guys, thank you for making Lockdown Astros and Lockdown Phillies your first listen every day. For your next listen, check out the Lockdown Sports Today podcast. The biggest stories of today, plus instant reaction, big game recaps, and the take of the day available on the Odyssey app. YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. And we'll be back tomorrow after the game, hopefully talking about the Astros' victories over this guy's team. And um, and he'll be hopefully wanting the opposite. But that's all we got for this edition. And go Strohs, and we'll see you tomorrow.